Um, we should be going into the next uh, panel, but in the program we have what we call the stakeholders uh, response. And I've just made an appeal to uh, some of them. We only have the Director of of Nigeria uh, President, Victor High, to make his contribution. And then, Mommy, please, you wrap it up for us, and then we can take the next panel with uh, Funke. No, you wrap up this session for us because this, you are a stakeholder. In fact, you are the grand matriarch of stakeholding. You are holding the stake. <laughs> please, can you spotlight uh, Victor right, so High? Let's have Victor Kai, please. Um, media. Let's have Victor, Victor Kai, Kai is the president of the Director Guild of Nigeria. Okay, and I'll try and be very brief as well because I have to leave. Um, I, I want to express my disappointment. That's not a good opening, but I want to express my disappointment with the last speaker, uh, Mr. Alakwini. Um, as a lawyer, I expect people to argue with facts. Everything that has been said so far about, about we are talking about Nollywood here, but I've not seen facts expressed. I'll come back and address him later. But first, what the first thing I want to say is that um, dogs and goats must be very great fans of Nollywood. And uh, I say so because when I move around and I see uh, kid goats trying to mount on their, on, their, on their mothers, they must be watching Nollywood. You know? <laughs> you know? And then, uh, uh, another thing is, we talk about social. I mean, we we are we are, we are flogging Hollywood today, and we forget that social media is the greatest influencer today. Nobody is talking about it. The thing, I don't know how many. I don't know how many people seated in the audience there today who are speaking. Who can put one movie? One just one movie where. Anybody has done anything negative that can influence. I mean, anybody has done it, especially those who are against Nollywood, to point to one movie, to point to one thing that is movie, and it influences and changes. The only thing we've been talking about, and let's put the reference to Mr. Lackett, when he talked about his visit, he talked about the barber shops. Everything he said was positive. The people were looking, watching Nollywood, they enjoyed it. Okay? But what, what, when you talk about what caused the war, the reference read you. That had nothing to do with Nollywood. I was like, the, the Nollywood movies that, that the war, war in Rwanda. But they ended up saying it you. And I'm wondering why Nollywood was the picture he painted of Nollywood was a very positive image. Okay? Now, 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 now. we borrowed, he, we are talking about, if we are talking about consumers, we are borrowed from the American, uh, borrowed from the American. And the first amendment, the American Constitution guarantees, as I was talking about the first amendment, eh, which guarantees freedom of expression and speech. And the interesting thing about it is that in spite of all the freedom and all that, people will be referencing gunshots because they see them in Hollywood movies and all that. But the truth is that the reason you have killings in America is because of, the, is, is because of their gun laws. The fact that anybody can license and own a gun and guns are freely available, obviously that's the reason why you can get so much killing. Nothing to do with the movies. There's nothing to do with the movies because... If guns are given freely today, whether you watch Nollywood or not, you know, I don't even think the Abrobats have time to watch Nollywood movies in any case. You know, people will still do what they want to do. Again, when we look at things like if we want to do a movie today on the Biafran War, for instance, which is part of our history, or some of the uh, our recent past history, you will get people like in the sense of board suddenly becoming very uh, nervous. And, and when I say this, because across all regimes, because of course, many of them are thinking about their jobs. Not necessarily because they don't believe in the project, but they are wondering what their ministers will say, and probably what the, what the president, who probably doesn't have time to watch television, will be saying. You know, so, and yet, you see books every day 
written on the Biafran war. It has not cost any, it has not cost a second Nigerian civil war. Okay? We see them every day. You see write-ups in newspapers and all that. It has not cost a second war. I don't know why Nollywood should be the whipping child. We are, I guess what is happening is, it's like a beautiful girl. When you see a very pretty girl, everything you begin to say, eh, is it because you're fine? Whatever. They just pick on that girl because she's beautiful. And that's what Nollywood simply is right now. A beautiful bride. We keep accusing her of things that she's not guilty of at all. Now, if you look at, I want to if, let me let me come back to what I was saying about uh, uh, some of the other speakers earlier on, or Mr. Lacking out there. Every example that has been used so far has been for negativity has been anything but Nollywood. You know, I talked about the radio in Rwanda. That was what caused the genocide. It had nothing to do with Nollywood movies. It has nothing to do with the movies. It was radio. Radio is not Nollywood. Eh? Now, uh, Twitter was responsible for the hashtag NSAS. That was social media. It was not Nollywood. Okay? Now, another... I, I could, these kind of videos are not Nollywood. The madam that was sitting there was talking about uh, the influence of uh, musical videos. We are talking Nollywood. We are not talking musical videos. If we're talking media generally, let's address media. But if this topic is Nollywood, then you will agree that Nollywood is the most innocent of all the media. And the big question is, how many people truly watch Nollywood? And how many people are truly influenced? You think these kids have time for Nollywood? All they do is go on social media. Okay? Social media is where you spread all the negativity. Nollywood has nothing to do with it. Okay? But when things happen... The first place they go to and the first victim is Nollywood. And then everyone says Nollywood is spreading, is talking about rituals and all that. Bomo Bomo in those days, when they were doing Bomo Bomo, was Nollywood there? In the days of our NUC, was Nollywood there? I just want to appeal to us. Please, gentlemen and ladies, if anything, Nollywood is the best PR for Nigerians and, Ni and Nigeria everywhere. If you go everywhere, you are greeted. If, if you know they greet you with Nollywood, they because they have positive images. Let's listen, please. Okay, sorry, I'm about to round up. Okay, they greet you very well. They have good memories and fond memories when they think about Nollywood, and that's why you get good reception from wherever you go, to, whether as a government official or as a private citizen. And if you go, especially when we had CDs to share, they would ask you for it as a gift. They would appreciate that more than anything else. Okay? So what I want to ask this gathering, I would like us to address and separate. You know, there's a proverb. They say, mechanic, not let us know mad people again. Okay? Don't lump Nollywood with the rest of media. Don't lump Nollywood with television. Musical videos you watch on television. All the negative things you watch, they are either on television or they are on social media. We have enough regulation. We self-regulate on our own. We don't do pornography. Pornography is underground. That is not Nollywood. So I just want this house, let us agree once and for all, that Nollywood, if anything, has helped the image of Nigeria, okay? And that Nollywood is not the problem. And Mr. Alapini, Alapini, going forward, please separate the facts you know, when you are taking on issues, don't lump things together. You are a lawyer. You would don't put everything in the same box. Nollywood is Nollywood. Don't talk about. Don't use radio to castigate Nollywood. Don't use social media and castigate Nollywood. Leave Nollywood alone. If you have a good experience with Nollywood, say so and be truthful about it. But don't rub the uh, the s word on Nollywood because you want to lump up because. You need to make an argument. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to wrap up this session by bringing uh, our mommy, Taiwa Jailai Set, to wrap this up. I have no statement. But I just want to know that the DG did not have time to talk about how you regulate uh, online content, the one that are posted on YouTube and the rest of them, because it didn't come out in your statement maybe later when you are contributing okay. yes, sir, thank you everybody for your patience thank you for listening uh, this is a very important 
gathering. We're getting emotional about it. And there isn't anything emotional about this. I think we ought to use our head instead. There's a big elephant sitting in the room. And we, some of us know it. I think the DG, is it DG, uh, uh, the census has warned us. And all the discussion, wonderful as the contributions have been, have ignored what he said. The big elephant is professionalism in, in the business. And we're not addressing that. professionalism, organization. We've allowed the industry to be essentially amateur, anything goes, everybody's in it, and nobody's checking anything. I think that, that's one of the most important, in fact, it is the important point to address, that if we have any industry at all, those of them who are organizing it and so passionate about what they're doing, they got to address this. It's not enough to be churning up movies and everything without all of that being underpinned by the responsibility we hold to this country. This is why people just don't take us seriously, because we think anything goes. I'm going to annoy many people today because Fela has given us that. You can go around in your underpants and you can smell and smoke ganja as, this, as big as this. And that's supposed to be uh, uh, creative. That's the freedom we're talking about. No. Which, with privilege comes responsibility. Because people look at us, people see us as role models. We can't afford to just do how, what we like and how we feel. We have a responsibility to the, youth, to the young. We have a responsibility to our country. Has it occurred to all of us that Hollywood is Hollywood now? Hollywood, not Nollywood. Hollywood has given to the world what they want us to know of America, not real America. And we bought into all this. And we say, yes, we must tell it as it is. And we, th and we think that, well, we are just mirroring what's happening in society. Our responsibility in society is to switch the light bulb in our heads, in our people's heads, is to set our world on fire. Not to reflect back to the society all the bad things that are happening in the society, but to change the society. Our responsibility is to set the country on fire. I mean in the positive way. Is that what we're doing? Because I sit here and I'm listening to people who are, in, who are working, they're on the defensive. I think this is an opportunity for us to regroup, to rethink to ask ourselves exactly what are we doing to our country. I hear where we're the second clinical clinical in the GNDP or GMP or whatever. We're making money. And then you're saying that our young, all they want is money. Because all we respect is money and we're projecting it. And our life is more than money. We have lost civility. And we call that protest. The person who was uh, uh, attacking Lai Mohammed and everything. There is no civility in that. There is no taste. We have lost breeding. This is not Nigeria. And we've got to be very careful what the outside world, the Western world, is trying to make us turn our country into. They're in bed with you guys. And because you're so hungry for fame and money and everything, we want to change our, our values. We have indeed changed our values. We are now without values. 
I was going to... We go abroad and we get educated. And we come home with their mind, not ours. We're supposed to have tools, yeah. We're supposed to have tools to, to be able to see our world differently and reconstitute our world. But no, we want to become them. And look at all of you. You with your hair, can you tell me what that says about your culture? I'm sorry, I don't have anything to, to, to fear anymore. What does, it, what does it say to your culture here? Being blonde in Africa, is that projecting African culture? It isn't. But are we asking ourselves of the things we're wearing and the things we're doing and the things we're using, how that promotes our culture? And it isn't politics that, that moves the world. Culture is what moves the world. And as custodians of that culture, are you good ambassadors of your culture? Or are you trying to ape other countries and then justify that on the grounds that you are creative? And nobody must tell you how you interpret that. I am all for the muse sitting on my shoulder and telling me what to do. Because what I hear is telling all of us, but it's only one person who will hear. The man who, who composed Wazobia, Walede, somebody, somebody, Nigerian. I don't think we honor that man very much. We don't think he's done anything. The mule sat on his shoulder and dictated that tune and that uh, lyric to him, and he brought it to life. That is how the muse treats us. Am I wrong, sir? And we, you are chosen, but I don't think you realize the importance of that, that anointing, I will call it. We have been kissed by the gods. Are the gods proud of us, what we're doing to our country? Are the gods proud of what we're, how we're interpreting uh, uh, them to, to the other people? So this business of being defensive and wanting to be free, when you really don't even know your way. As I said, we're ignorant of our culture. We're ignorant. We are ignorant of our religions, and we do have a collection of religions. And what did the Yoruba say? Oni komo yomaku en en o omo ego oni komaku kilo makwa. Well, I rest my case. Thank you, thank you very much, Mom. Thank you. I didn't know Ahmad Sarari was online. Is the president of uh, the Motion Picture Practitioners of Nigeria, MOPAN, uh, from the north? The national, national president. Yeah. National. Okay. And the national president. He's the, the national, national president. president of Motion Picture Practitioners of Nigeria, MOPAN. Sarari, please. Good morning, everybody. Uh, okay. Thank you for me. Uh, actually, a lot has been said, and I understand the purpose of our gathering here is to create a synergy and the understanding between the regulators and the creative minds and the product they send for for censorship or whatever. But for regulation, for, the, for any regulatory reform to be successful, I believe the law and the system must be uniform. Because we here in the northern part of Nigeria, we are the victims of harsh regulation. I can remember 2007, 2008, 2009, over 200 filmmakers from Kanwa as a part of northern Nigeria were jailed. Their houses were sacked. So for us to avoid repeat of such, I think we need to start from the big elephant as the lawyer has said from the constitution. We should come together and make sure we influence the National Assembly to remove National Canadian Video Censor Board Act from 
wrong. Concurrent legislative act, legislative act, legislative act, so that state will not be manipulating creative talent. Before the advent of 2007 event in Canada, we were selling our films. Our creativity was free. We had that freedom. But after that, now we have lost all the market because we don't have that creative freedom anymore. Whenever we are writing our script, we have censorship in mind. Yeah, we say we remove it. In fact, there was a time when cameras were not allowed to get into the bedroom. There was a time when we are not allowed to expose hair of the female in our team. And up now, the law exists on that. So unless we have a uniform legislation on censorship or regulation creativity, some part of the country will benefit, will move further, but the other part of the country will remain behind. That's why I want to ask us to come together and to come. Now we have the bill for national bill. I believe some of these issues have been addressed. So I urge the organizers and the creative industry to come together and make sure that it's going to be a quick facet of that bill. And we add the change of the bill from concurrent legislative Thank you. This is literally I have because I should time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ahmad Sarari. Actually, before you came on, uh, the research that was done by UVA already confirmed that the North actually has, uh, in fact, bigger than, uh, they have a larger percentage than 20% for the whole of Africa of uh, censorship that is going on there. But, so we, we, we know the kind of situation you're going through there. And, um, but we also uh, ask for continuous engagement with the power that be, especially as we move into uh, 2023. <laughs> this political season, there's going to be a lot of censorship, a lot of clamp down that even the censor board will not be aware of. So we just continue to engage. So thank you very much. This is the end of this particular um, session. The next session is actually moving in straight. Our director of program is here to <laughs> take over. Thank you well, very it's much. Very hot. Such a, please a round of applause.